Hi, everyone, and welcome. So my name is Francesco, and I'm a business analyst in the Google Play team. And today, we'll talk together with Toby about influencers. But let me start by introducing one of them to you. So his name is Yarn. He's a YouTube gaming influencer, and he has a channel called Orange Juice Gaming with more than 1 million subscribers. So these people really trust his gaming reviews. And we're here today, together with Toby, to, talk, to tell you more about the value that we think Yarn, as well as other YouTube influencers like him, can bring to your business. So today we'll go through three main um, areas. The first one is about the influencer opportunity and challenges. Then I will walk you through a methodology that we built internally in Google to measure the full value of influencer marketing. And then Toby will finish by telling you uh, some best practices on how to build a successful influencer strategy going forward. So we all know this. YouTube is a big thing. And it is a big thing on the user side. So what research says is that 90% of gamers turn to YouTube at least once a week to discover gaming content. This gaming content could be about advancement tips. Maybe users are stuck into a level and want to know how to get through. It could be to watch their favorite creator playing games or to discover new games. So definitely, YouTube is a big thing on the user side. But what about on the developer side? Well, I'm sure that you know from your business that it is a big thing on the developer side as well. So game developers already today spend more than 250 million a year on influencer content. And this number is forecasted to grow a lot in the next few years. But that's what research says. I'm actually curious to know, within this room, how many of you spent on influencer content in the past couple of years? Please, hands up. Pretty much everyone. And how many of you are 100% confident that the methodology that you used to evaluate the full impact of these campaigns is fully accurate? One person. <laughs> OK, we should talk afterwards. <laughs> I actually agree with you. It's, it's really, really tough to measure the full impact of influencer content. And there is this big industry attribution challenge that I'm sure everyone in this room faces. So the way it works today is that developers would collaborate together with uh, creators. Then these YouTube creators or influencers will produce a video, upload the video into their channel, and then include one of these trackable links in the description underneath the video. And then obviously developers would hope that all the users who watch the video and are interested to download the game do it by clicking on the link so they can be tracked. However, we all know that this is not the case. Some of the users who watch the video and still download the game do it without clicking on the link. And so it's really hard to understand what is the value and what is the size of this non-tracked majority. And so the classical ways that developers use nowadays to do that is to look at the performance of the video, look at how many people click on the link and download the game, and try to estimate this K factor of users who watch the video, didn't click, but still download. And how to do that? You would usually look at your install uh, numbers over time and try to estimate how many of these users that you see in these spikes are coming through the video itself. But that's a really hard thing to do. And it's even harder whenever there is noise in the installs. So try to imagine that you just launched your game. There will be a spike in installs anyway, even without videos. Or try to think that you're running a uh, paid campaign at the same time how do you know how much of these users, this non tracked majority, is coming from paid, organic, or the video itself? But let me spend a minute to talk about this non tracked majority. Who are these users? So these are people who are watching the video and deciding not to click on the link, uh, but still download the game. Or maybe they didn't see the, the link. It could be users who. Um, watch the video, download the game, but wait for Wi-Fi not to use their whole data plan while installing. Or it could be also users watching the video on PC and then just grabbing the phone next to them to download the game. Does this sound familiar? Great. So 
we thought that we as Google, we are in a unique position to try to help you to understand the value and the size of this non-track majority. And so we developed a methodology that I'm really excited to share with you today. So what we did, we combined the knowledge that we have from YouTube, meaning users watching videos, and from Play, meaning the same users then going on the store and hopefully installing the game. And so with this methodology, we have been able to see out of a cohort of users who have been exposed to watch a YouTube gaming video featuring a particular game, how many of these same users after viewership went into the Play Store and downloaded the game. And then we want to go one step further and try to understand what is the value of these users. So we also checked how many of them turned into buyer, and if they do, how much they spend over time after viewing the video. And so then we use this methodology to analyze a pool of more than 120 videos, making up a total of 50 million views. And in order not to be biased with the results that we are going to share with you today, we took examples from developers of all sizes, genre, and with games at different life cycle stages. And then we mix it up also on the influencer side. So we took examples from micro as well as more established influencers, and also from gaming as well as non-gaming influencers. And so I'm really excited now to share with you some of the insights that we have. So let's jump into measuring influencer and the key insights that we have. So we divided the insights into two main buckets. Insights about the gamers and I will go through them, and then insights about the influencers, and Toby will come back to talk to you about that. So the gamers. I'm sure that the question that everyone is asking themselves right now is, we talked about this non-tracked non majority, how big it is? Well, I'm very glad to tell you today that using our methodology, we saw that there are 4x more installs beyond the tracking link. That means that next time that you do an influencer marketing campaign, for every person that you see that watches the video, clicks on the link, and downloads the game, you can expect, on average, to have four more people who do the same without clicking. And by the way, 4x is just an average. This multiplier can be as high as 10x, depending on the type of content and the type of game that the, the creator is featuring. And so the follow-up question that we had after that, after understanding how big is this non track majority, is how does the distribution of the install look like over time? Do they come all at the same time? Do they come after a few hours, after a few days, and so on? And so what we saw is that, on average, 50% of the install come within the first hour after the users viewed the video on YouTube. But then you may also think, OK, but what about if I want to know a good attribution window to capture all the installs, not just 50%? Then we saw that after four days, the installs start to be flat. So users, after the moment when they watch the video, it takes about four days to decide whether or not to install the game. So if you're not sure of the attribution window to use uh, for your next influencer marketing campaign, then four days is a good one. Second insight is about ripple effect across your portfolio. So similar games will get in installs as well even if they are not shown or featured in your game, in your video. So what we saw is that for an influencer marketing campaign showing a particular game in your portfolio, let's call it game A, then you can also get installs in game B in your portfolio, even if it was not shown in the video itself. So for every 10 people who watch the video and download the game A, there is also one person on average which will go one step further and download also game B from your portfolio. And again, one out of 10 is just an average. This multiplier can be as high as three people out of 10 people, depending on the type of influencer and also depending if the users who install the first game in your portfolio love it so much that want to try another one. So last insight is about targeting. Targeting matters. Focus on your key audience. Well, this insight may sound a little bit obvious. However, what is interesting to see is that this is not always true, and it really depends on the metric that you want to drive. 
So if you want to drive installs, that is definitely the case. So the creator, which had the audience uh, with a demographic that matches as much as possible the demographic of the game itself, those videos are the ones who have the highest install per view rates. However, if you want to drive spend, this is not always the case. Because what we saw from the data is that, on average, users between 24 and 49 years old are 3x more likely to spend than younger users. And by the way, whenever they spend, they have, on average, a 30% higher average revenue per paying user. So next time you do a campaign, think about what you want to drive. If you want to drive installs, then definitely focus on your key audience. If you want to drive spend, focus on the users between 24 and 49, because they are more likely to buy, and when they buy, they spend more. So let me now pass it over to Toby to talk about the insights on the influencers. Thank you. Thank you, Francesco. And he's actually not the best FIFA player on our team, so, so that's something else. OK, so I will now talk a bit about the insights we have gathered when it comes to the influencers, because uh, Francesco and I did not only look at influencer videos, we also talked to many developers to understand a bit better how they are working with influencers. And one thing we have been hearing pretty often is that once a developer is finding an influencer to work with, the developer likes to work with them again and again. Well, this is something you can do, but we also saw an effect you might want to be aware of. And this is something what we call download fatigue. Because if you work with the same creator again within the time period of a year, the second video will have, on average, 2x less installs compared to the first video. So you can draw the conclusion that gamers who will see the first video of a specific creator will either convert or not. And you still might want to work again with the same creator because maybe you want to work with them to build your community, to re-engage users, or there was just a good deal. Um, but this is something to be aware of. Secondly, when we were talking to developers, we were discussing, so what is the performance of these influencer marketing campaign? We looked at all the data we have gathered. Um, and one major thing we found out is that many people out there try to measure influencer campaigns just as the same way as they measure app install campaigns. I would be a little bit cautious here because one, app and store campaigns are, if you run them on the classic performance marketing network, a bit different if you only look at the setup. If you work with an influencer, you need to find the right influencer. You need to communicate with them. You need to agree on a payment model. And if you are run uh, ads with Google USC or any other network, you basically have a creative a bidding and a budget, and that's it. And furthermore, if you look at influencer marketing campaigns based on traditional performance marketing KPIs, they might not perform as strong as the average UAC, Facebook, or whatever campaign. But so that is, that is important to notice. But there is one more thing to be aware of. So one, there is more with influencers than just performance. And I will tell um, more about this very soon. And then thirdly, we also found a segment which was highly profitable and very strong when it comes to influencer marketing. And those were rather small influencers, what we call micro-influencers. So when we were looking at smaller influencers with 10 to 100,000 subscribers, well, these creators were able to drive CPIs which were on average 3x lower than established influencers. And also, the conversion rate, which, it, which means the view to download, was very strong as well. Well, I'm now not saying go away from the big names, because they have some obvious uh, advantages, such as a higher virality, and so on and so forth. But if you are still not sure about influencer marketing, you know, remember when Francesco asked all of you at the very beginning, maybe working with smaller influencers could be a nice and less risky way, a good entry point uh, to use this tool for acquiring users. So much for working with micro-influencers. This is a summary now of all the research we have been doing over the past month. And 
feel free to share all these lessons learned across your company with product folks, with marketing folks, with game analytical folks, because um, I think it's, it's important that every function of your company is aware of these effects, and then you can make the best out of it for your specific case. So we talked about the installs, the non-track majority. We talked about ripple effects, that targeting is important. There's also a download fatigue. Influencer campaigns need to be measured a bit differently probably than traditional performance marketing campaigns. And there is a strong potential when it comes to micro-influencers. So what's next? What's now? Last but not least, I would like to work with you on building now an influencer strategy because for you, the big question is now, I've listened to all this research. What shall I do now when I'm at my desk tomorrow morning or on Monday morning? So Francesco and I thought about this, and we were thinking, OK, so maybe if you attend playtime, you go back to your office and you talk to your marketing person, or maybe your marketing person yourself. And not to use any stereotypes here, but the average performance marketing person might look a bit like this. So let's say you go back to the office and talk to him or her. What will you say? Well, our idea would be um, tell them about the golden rules for influencer marketing. Because what we did is we took all these lessons learned, and we now have a recommendation for each of these effects. And this is one thing you can take home with or take to the office. I'm not sure what you want to do at home. But uh, you can take these lessons learned with you and apply them in your daily business. So one, consider the multipliers, the 4x, the non-track majority when you evaluate your influencer marketing campaigns. Two, be aware of the ripple effects. And be also aware that users might download a similar game, which is not from you, but maybe from a competitor. So this is something to be aware of. And again, if you're not too sure about influencer marketing, maybe wait until you have a similar game in your portfolio so you can finally benefit a bit from that ripple effect. Then thirdly, stick to the targeting of your key audience and stick to the targeting of users between 24 and 49 years. When it comes to download fatigue, just be aware that the first video is the video which is generating all these installs. And if you engage again with a developer, sorry, with a, with a creator, it will be about re-engagement. And when it comes to influencer campaigns, well, our thinking is one, try to be very performance-based. Try to have CPI or even revenue share deals with influencers. Try to go away from those CPM deals. Obviously, this is always a thing to negotiate for and with, and there are different strategies, but this is at least one thing you can do. And then also you can hedge against the risk that maybe some users who come to your game after watching a video of an influencer, that these users do not convert and pay. Well, if you have ads in your game, you can hedge against this risk because every install can mean a person who is watching an ad, a rewarded video. And then last but not least, for the micro-influencers, we think that there's a real opportunity here. Do not only focus on the big names. And that's why we thought, let's give you also some best practices for working with micro-influencers. And again, there are many more best practices, but this is just something to start with. So one, the one thing is, how do you find those, those people who, who could be interested in your game? Well, one very simple idea is just go on YouTube and check out who is streaming your game already. Maybe they know other influencers. Maybe they have subscribed to some channels. Try to dig into this topic. Try to really find those people who would be genuinely interested in your game. Because if these guys grow, you know, your game will grow with them. Secondly, it's a good bargaining position for you if somebody is not as established. So you can try to make good deals. You should always do fail deals because there's always karma involved in the gaming industry. But there is definitely a good bargaining power on your side. And then third, if this is working for you, think of scaling up. Think of working with several micro-influencers at the same time. And if you think this holds all good, but I do not have so much time for this, maybe consider working with an agency or a third party which really knows this stuff. And you can now use all the lessons learned from today to evaluate and brief these third parties so you can be sure that they deliver the results you're looking for. So, so much for the performance market here in yourself or in your company. But we thought there is a bit more to influencers than just performance. 
So when you go back to your company, maybe do not only talk to the marketing person, maybe also talk to the guy or girl who is looking into social media and PR. And again, not to use any stereotypes here, but that person might look a bit like this. So the important thing is that community building can help you to drive performance in the long term. And that's why you should empower this person as much as the marketeer in your team. And why? Because communities can help you to be successful in the long term. And we tried to come up with a formula, because we're here at Google, um, to explain why that is. So one, there's the rising quality of new releases out there. There are increasing marketing costs. And there are more and more multiplayer games getting released. And that means these users are occupied by other games already. So it's just getting more competitive, right? And that means there's a need for creating a community. Because only if you create a community, you will be able to survive with your game for more than three, four, or five years. And creating communities, well, this is all what influencers are about. So do not only think of the performance marketing aspect, do also think of the long-term benefits of working with influencers and opinion leaders. And I would like to show you now one example of a developer who has worked with an influencer to build a community even ahead of the release of the game. Space Ape Games invited Team Secret to their office to play their new game Rumble League, which has not even been released yet. So let's see how it looks like if there's a tournament between the developer and an esports team. Very cool, very cool. So I think this is a great example of building a community, even if your game has not been released yet. The influencers are playing directly against the developers. They create bonds. They will reach out again and again. And this is a very, very strong way to be successful in the long term. And that also leads me to my conclusion. The idea is to not only think of performance, but also to think of performance, but just add this thinking that videos and influencers are more and ideally get the performance marketing uh, person and the social media person together, or maybe have a job description which is combining both jobs. Um, if you're a smaller company, you have this already. So this is the idea of driving success with influencers. I would like to conclude now this presentation by coming back to Jan. You remember him? That was the influencer Francesco introduced to you at the very beginning. He has a channel called OJ Gaming with 1 million subscribers, so he definitely knows something about building communities. But now I wonder what he actually thinks of today's presentation. Uh, let's hear it from himself. Toby, Francesco, that was an excellent presentation. Thank you for that. I hope everyone enjoyed the insight and influencers on YouTube. Me and everyone else are super excited to be working with you, and now, Playtime. Thank you very much. And if you were not convinced that building communities and engaging users makes sense, well, now this was the, the reason why it is important. This person just engaged all of you, our top partners in EMEA, within 12 seconds. If you have any more ideas, requests, or questions, please 
ask them now or also for more extensive questions and ideas, please leave your feedback under g.co slash play slash influencer value. And now Francesca and myself are happy to take a few questions right now. If you have any questions, please raise your hand and you will get a mic. Uh, just a quick question for the, one of the last parts you brought up regarding using influencers to use uh, to build communities pre or prior to the start. Um, like, what was the outcome except for the video? Uh, I think you need to ask Space Ape Games to get the, to get the uh, result of that. But what I would personally say is, it is a long-term approach, right? Because the outcome is. You have influencers who then know the game, who you can be in touch with again. And you can then also be in touch with the people they know. This is just one esports team. So I think this is just you know, a very, very small shot of a longer term strategy and approach, which will just help to have an organic impact once the game is getting released. So let's say it's a bit like um, if you're planning a big party and you're already making friends a few months before. So this way, the people will come once you have the party, which will be the launch of the game. That's what I assume. One more working mic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for the awesome presentation. I think most of us were waiting for this kind of a tech for quite some time. Uh, I'd like to ask you, please, uh, el if you could elaborate more of the execution itself. So let's say I found my pool of influencers uh, and, and I want to execute the campaign. Uh, what specifically would I need to do to make use of this view through attribution with the Windows uh, for the Play Store? Uh, and, and maybe that if there are maybe some plans or, or strategies how to make it more accurate also for other platforms as um, of course, the, influ the traffic would have spillover effects uh, on any platform where the game is. Thank you. So, so sorry, just the, the question is how to use these, these insights, or what exactly? Sorry, just add active, reactivate the mic, please. OK. Uh, OK, yes. uh, so, so if, uh, if it's just the insights, or we can use the, okay, got the it. view through attribution got it. at some point. Okay. Got it. So today was all about the insights. Um, because we are coming from a long journey trying to look at this topic and helping developers. So this is basically an experiment and a pilot. If you now think, I want to use this, I want to have this for my business, g.co slash play slash influencer value, please give us this feedback because only if we have more ideas and requests that you want to use you know, this, this technology or this attribution as part of your business, only then we can drive forward with this project. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Yes. I think there was a question more at the front as well. Just, uh, just a quick question. Is your uh, methodology... Uh, yeah, sorry, here. Hi. Bonjour. Thank you very much for the... Oh, there you go. Uh, for the presentation. Is your methodology and results also applicable to premium games? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we just had a look at a court of users watching a game, and then what do they do on the Play Store? So that applies absolutely to any game, free or paid or anything. Yeah. Hi. Sorry, is this on? Yeah. Um, thanks, it's a super useful uh, presentation. Um, quick question. Uh, I think one of the challenges as well is very often the refer link on YouTube is not very visible, it's a bit below and all that. Are there any plans to make that refer link or have something a bit more powerful than that? So we are looking into this, but you also know when we are looking into things at Google, it can sometimes take a while. Uh, but we are very, very uh, aware that right now the solution, it looks like a, like a hack, right? It looks like very, very on the fly. And this is still something what, what we use in, in the industry and which is more or less the standard, except that we now try to look a bit beyond this. So uh, hopefully at some point, that's what I think personally, but we, yeah, we are looking at the space. And again, feel free to add this feedback. Yes, yeah, so we are trying to, you know, we are trying to begin a movement here. Uh, and we would be happy if you're a part of it. How many requests do you need in there so that we yes. can Yes, many? yes. How many? Well, there's no, there's no threshold, so we get as many as possible. Thanks. 
So one more question. Do we have time for one more question? One more question? Okay. Okay, if there are no more questions left, then I think we are quite early or even on time. That's the thing about being in Germany. So <laughs> I'm now happy to send you off to, to lunch. But before we do that, please make sure to check out all the games we have in the playground. So we have VR games, AR games, AI games. There's even a Google Play quiz, so you can test your Google Play knowledge. And you even can try your skills in a scooter race. So please go back through, uh, through the outdoor area and be back for the sessions at 2 PM, because then we will listen about monetization. And that is something you do not want to miss as a game developer. Thank you.